Okay, so I'm going to make a couple of videos here showing you how to set up your audio settings so that you'll be able to do your podcast interview. First, I'm going to show you how to make sure uh, that the stuff is hooked up properly. So at the moment, I have my audio interface plugged in to my computer through USB and a microphone plugged into that. So in order to check and make sure that that's working properly, I'm going to go to my applications. So I open up a finder window, then I go to applications, and I can scroll down to utilities, and then audio MIDI setup. I click here, and then on the left side, in this window, I will see all of the devices currently connected to my computer. My audio interface is this one here called iRig Pro Duo. And then I've got my built-in microphone, my built-in speakers, and then the Zoom audio device is the software version of an audio interface. Basically, it's Zoom audio uh, coming from the program Zoom. So I can see that it's hooked up properly. Now, I can set this up so that the iRig Pro Duo, which is where my microphone's plugged in now, is set as the default in and out if I wanted to do that. And if so, I would right click on that and say, use this for sound input or sound output. Okay. Uh, I don't need to do that right now, but that's how I would set that up if that's what I needed to do. Once I have my audio MIDI setup stuff right, I can then set up Zoom to make sure that it is finding the things properly as well. So I will open up Zoom and come to this little gear icon in the top right corner and I'm going to go to audio. Now in here I can set the microphone itself. Right now Zoom is using the built-in mic even though I have that other microphone connected, right? So I can click here and instead say please use the iRig Pro Duo. That's the audio interface where my mic is plugged in. Now it's using that mic instead. Okay, so that's good making sure that the person on the other end would hear me through this mic rather than the built-in mic. Next, I push the advanced button down there at the bottom and I'm going to check this box that says show in meeting option to enable original sound. That will then give the other end, well my end and the other end, the ability to make sure that it sounds as good as possible for the, for the listener. And then also this high fidelity music mode. Check both of those boxes. All right, cool. Then once I'm in a meeting, which I will just go ahead and start one for a second here. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I can come to the top left corner and you will see that in the, in the window for Zoom, there's a turn on original sound. That option is not present unless I clicked that box a minute ago, right? So I would then turn that on. Now, at least in theory, the person on the other end of this hypothetical Zoom call is hearing it better audio quality than they were a minute ago. And then I would ask them to do the same. However, you as the host need to set that up on your end to make, make it possible for them to even have that option. So you would then direct them to go to that top left corner, say, please push the turn on original sound button, and at least supposedly it will sound noticeably better. The next thing we need to set up is the internal recording settings on Zoom itself. So again, I'm going to go to the settings menu here and then go to recording. And I'm going to make sure that I check the box that says record a separate audio file for each participant, this second box down. That will make sure that I get an audio file for me and an audio file for the person I'm interviewing. Without that box checked, I only get one audio file, which, useful, is a little bit more of a pain to try to do editing and such. So it's better to make sure that I check that box first. Okay, so record a separate audio file for each participant. Personally, I like to have it, I push this button here that says choose a location. Technically speaking, if I don't check that, it's just automatically going to go to this place that I've chosen here. Okay, however... I just like the reassurance that after it's done recording, it goes, okay, I recorded it. Where do you want to put that? For me, it's just kind of like a reminder that, yes, it actually did record. Okay. Uh, these other ones you don't have to turn on or off. They don't matter too much. 
although I do like this one, the Optimize for Third Video third-party video editor simply because it just uses more standard file formats. Okay, so when all is said and done, I'm going to go back into a meeting again here. If I want to record my meeting, I come down now to the bottom of the screen and I push record. Okay, now it'll allow me to record to this computer or record to the cloud. It may not let you do the cloud. That's a more advanced setting that I have as a professor. So I'm going to say record onto this computer. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, I'm going to unmute myself. Hello, this is me recording my meeting. Then I'm going to end it. And it's going to then convert that to the proper files. Where do I want to put it? Push save. Okay, now here I am. Now the good, the best part of all of this, why we set all that up, is so that right there there's an audio folder. And here's me. Okay. And then here's the other person, which nobody showed up, right? So there's going to be nothing in there. Except for that. So then I would take those two audio files and I would put them into my editor to put them together, make them sound nice, and so on. Now, some of that will be useful no matter what your situation is. But those things at the end about using Zoom itself to actually record the meeting and separate the audio files and all of that, that's actually only a worst case scenario if you can't do some of the more advanced things. But I will save that for a separate video.